What's up, everybody? Semi Original Guy here, aka Mr. Cannon from Advanced Host by Web, bringing you a Global League game that I played recently against somebody named Brass Mac, who was a, in my opinion, I thought he was a very good opponent. Especially for somebody of my skill level, we seem very evenly matched, so I was very, very happy about this one. So once again, this is a global league, so if you are a member of Advanced Wars by Web, which is... I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can actually join up for free and play against people around the world. But what the global league is, is you sign up and then you play competitively against people that are also on the site. So you get raided, and you know, you climb the ladder, or you fall the ladder, one or the other. That's, uh, that's all you can really do. So... Let's go ahead and take a look at the player profiles for this one. So, I myself am Mr. Cannon, and as you can see, currently, I am actually rated the highest I've ever been, so I'm pretty ecstatic about that. I'm rated as 1086.55 in the Global League with 282 wins, 241 losses, and 14 draws. My favorite CEO to pick is Andy, next to Hawk. My opponent today, Brass Mac, who says he's not an idiot, he's a specialist. And I believe him when it comes to that. Currently, he is rated 966.24 in the Global League with a very nice record of 36 wins, 27 losses, and 2 draws, and his favorite CO is also Andy. So we got something in common there, buddy. Yeah, I'm liking it. So for this match, we actually had... Well, I mean, it was a Tier 4 match. So you can only pick between the Tier 4 CEOs. So my opponent has picked Jake, who is arguably one of the strongest picks when it comes to Tier 4. So Jake will actually get plus 10% attack power when attacking from planes what is a map primarily made of planes beautiful eh? so he could be very good uh his co-power land indirect units will get plus one range and a planes bonus will increase to 20 percent so that means his artillery his rockets i believe his battleships actually get the bonus too but don't quote me on that Anyways, so his Block Rock Super Cool Power, which has probably arguably the worst name in the entire game, but hey, what can you do? So land in directs gain plus one range, planes bonus increased to 40%, and the vehicles gain plus two movement, which is pretty good. Anybody that plays Advanced Wars competitively, uh, they will say, or at least I know I will say, that if you get a CO that gets additional movement during the Super Co Power, they are very, very powerful. Very powerful indeed. I think movement is definitely one of the most powerful things that you can do. Especially if you're a new player coming to Advanced Force competitively, picking a CO that'll give you movement will probably be really good for you, I would say. So. Myself, on the other hand, this is probably my most common tier 4 pick. I picked Jess. So Jess's vehicles gain 10, plus 10% 10 attack power all around. So always 10% bonus. But all other units, including foot soldiers, lose 10% attack. So your fighters, bombers, battlecopters, navy units, and infantry and mechs will all lose firepower. Which can be bad. Can be bad. For sure. But I feel like her day-to-day -day of having the vehicles boosted is a little bit good. But the real reason why I pick Jess most of the time is for Turbo Charge. Which is where vehicles get plus one movement and their attack is increased to 20%. And all units resupply fuel and ammo. So it can make those really, really big matches much more manageable for you. Overdrive is her super co power, which will allow vehicles to gain plus two movement and their attack increases to 40%. Once again, fuel and ammo is refueled. So I feel like she is very good in general. 
you know, I don't really have any complaints about Jess. Obviously, her infantry and stuff is a little bit weak during the capture game. But all in all, one of my favorite picks for sure. All right, so we have Jaws of Tyrants as the map for today, which is a high funds map. High funds, very, very important. So this map is, we have three bases on either side and an airport and a port, but the port doesn't really do too much. You know, you don't really want to build naval units necessarily but on this map navy units could play a small role in like the transportation game right you can build like a lander or you can build a black boat ferry units over to the center uh but if your plan is just to ferry infantry over probably a transport copter would work a little bit better in that sense but either way all right we are gonna get right into this let's go all right we are gonna go ahead and get right into this one here first thing that happens all the time in any game no matter who you're playing or what you're playing it is always gonna be standard infantry builds you gotta get those infantry out on the field that is 100% for sure so the first thing I do is I go to capture city well base gotta get your bases guys and girls gotta get your bases they are important so I also move my infantry over to capture the airport which I also thought was important you know Usually when I play this map, I like to get like an early transport copter out so I can start funneling units over to the center. All willy-nilly, you know, just get them in there, start capping some properties. You know, properties are important, gotta get them. One of my weakest things in uh, these matches in general is my capture game is atrocious. Atrocious, something I really need to work on. I feel like if I got my capture game up a lot better, maybe I would be able to you know, rise the ladder a little bit instead of just steadily falling down a hill. <laughs> Tumbling to my own demise. But that is a story for another day. So another thing I normally do is I'll skip these two properties right here. Right away. Because I want to get this property. Right? Is it a good plan? I don't know. I don't know if it's a good plan. But I like skipping them because I want to get like some further properties first. I feel like the further properties are harder to get. So I want to get them. Plus if I capture this property then it will make it open... So I can capture these properties right afterwards. Whereas if I stop to capture these, by the time I captured this, he would already have people in the area, right? And if there's one thing you don't want to happen when you're capturing properties, it's to have people in the area stopping you. You don't want that. No, not at all. All right, so just more standard infantry builds. Now, the easiest way to get to this base is just steadily moving over the shoals and getting there. You know, you're not really... You don't really need to rush over there, necessarily. I mean, you will get there eventually. You could, like, forego it and build a transport copter and get over there, but you're going to get there late. So you just walk. Just walk, guys. You don't need to rush. So I built my transport copter. So we're going to see what I can do with that. Okay, so this is interesting. So Brazmac, my opponent for today, he has decided to build an artillery unit. So interesting first build. Very interesting. So the thing about artillery, right? They're a bit slower than tanks. And you need to get them into position before you can actually use them. So, we're going to see if that artillery actually plays a role later on in the game. Alright. So, <laughs> I kind of blundered this, right? So, I moved my transfer copter right here, just like kind of not really thinking about it too much. But, I knew I was going to build a tank out of here, so bringing this guy here was uh, not a good idea. I should have actually brought him up here so that he could funnel this infantry right there. That one. Silly moves, silly moves. 
But see, that's why my rating is what I am and it's not any higher, because I make silly moves like that sometimes. So doing that play over here would have got me some of these properties a little bit sooner. So, unfortunate. Alright, so Brass Mac has opened up with a tank on his southernmost base now. So this tank is going to be able to come over here and cover the comm tower and cover the capture game over in the south. But that's also where I have my tank. So he might have just built a tank there in order to counter my tank. Hmm. Once again, we're going to find out. So I also built a tank in the north because I want to also cover this area. Now the artillery is going to... It's gonna be good. So, okay, so Brass is a little bit late to the game of capturing these properties here. So, I mean, that's it's okay. The only issue is by waiting so long to capture those properties, now he's gonna have two infantry in the back line that are gonna take a little bit longer to get to the front. Uh, yeah, that's about it with that one wouldn't necessarily say that it's like you know a bad move but I feel like you should get those properties like like right away in my opinion at least okay so my transport copter is getting its first use so I'm gonna funnel my infantry up here I drop him here because I'm gonna try to go for this property right away because uh, this property is gonna be a little bit harder to hold than the rest of them so I just want to get get it out of the way so it's mine Nobody could take it from me. Hopefully. Cross fingers. Alright, so tanks are moving up. Infantry are moving up. And I go triple tank this round. Triple tank, guys and girls. That's the way to do it. This tank is pretty much pushed up as far as it can go, so it's out of the range of this tank over here. So that guy should not uh, pose any sort of a problem. Good. Good. That's the way to be. And, like I said, yeah, triple tank this turn. So, some people may disagree with me. Lots of people probably disagree with me. Because I'm not the best player, guys and girls. You know, but uh, I try my best. I try my best. But the way that I will usually play Jess is I will play Jess like a budget max. And I will just go almost full direct combat and just get in your face. As soon as I get turbocharged, I will usually pop it, get in there, do a bunch of damage. And then just see how it goes from there. Budget max. Alright, so Brass Mac. Oh yeah, he's capturing the airport now. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. Oh, so that's a cool response. So, yeah, that's neat. That's neat. So he's got three tanks and artillery. And then he actually responds with a medium tank. Because I got all these tanks now, but I don't have any tanks that could take out a medium tank. So he's probably just sitting there being all like, yeah, what you gonna do, Cannon? What you gonna do? I don't know yet. <laughs> I am not sure. But I see the medium tank, and I'm just thinking to myself, I'm like, hmm. It's a big unit. But, you know, what's your response to big units? More big units! Bam! Medium tank on the field, in the middle, threatening, looking menacing, intimidation, for sure. Alright, so, the way that it's looking now is, I have two tanks pushing north, three tanks pushing south, and then this medium tank can reinforce whichever direction his medium tank decides to go. So we're going to see what happens. We will see what happens, folks. Alright. So, Brass Mac. Mr. Jake is playing very conservatively here. He plants both of his tanks onto neutral properties that give him three-star bonuses. So, if you don't know, which I'm sure you all do, but... Every single piece of terrain on a map will give you defense bonuses of anywhere between 0 to 4 stars. 4 stars being the HQ in the mountains, 3 stars being cities, 
two stars being forests, one star being planes, zero being roads. Now what do the stars do? They increase your defense by 10% per star. It's very important to play around that stuff. For instance, if you were going to attack a tank with a tank, and the tank is sitting on city, let's say this one, and you attack it from this road, you're going to have a bad time. You want to make sure you have something to follow up that attack also. Because you will lose that engagement. There is just no question. Having a 30% deficit on defense is not good. Alright, so he built another medium tank, so I build another medium tank. And I'm going to interrupt this cap. Attacking from the forest, because it'll give me the most defense. Jess is already weak when it comes to infantry warfare, so you gotta make sure that you... Use every piece of defense you got. Okay, here we go. Medium tanks are getting into position. And, boom, we have another medium tank and a battle cop to this turn. Oh, boy. So, it's actually interesting that he decides to go air. Because, as we already discussed, who sucks... When it comes to air combat, Jess. Jess sucks. She can't do air combat. It is very tough. So the only way you can really effectively counter air units is with either anti-air units. Um, that's pretty much it, yeah. I mean, Battlecopter versus Battlecopter Warfare is kind of one-sided for the attacker, but Jess's are so weak that it's kind of tough. So I do an interesting play over here because I know that he's pushing up, right? And I know he's got this. This guy is one, two, three, four, five, six. So this guy is out of range. So I go up and attack this infantry with my tank because I want to weaken the side so that I can eventually hit this um, artillery unit right there. But the problem with this is I'm going to lose a tank in the process, and then this tank will be able to come in and also reinforce. So, it was a very risky move. Risky move. We're going to see if it works out for me, though. Alright. So, I am building a wall of defense. I even used my transport copter as the, the front runner <laughs> of my my little shield here too. Because uh, I don't know if these medium tanks would actually one-shot these infantry. I don't think they would. I think it would be somewhere around like 85%. Maybe. But either way, you know, you just, you can't be too careful. So since I attacked up here, I felt it was important to also do a little bit of damage down here. So I took one of my tanks and took a first shot at this guy here. Hoping for the best. But I also open... Bleh. I also counter his build with the identical build, but with an extra tank. So. So far on the capture game, we're even. But that's going to change, because he's about to capture his north property. Ooh, goes in for a luck roll with his infantry and fails, unfortunately. Rough. Rough. Oh, so playing risky with his medium tank, too. So, okay. Ooh. That was a risky play. So he moves his medium tank up here to take a shot, and I think he did kill what he was shooting at. But the problem is that medium tank is very exposed. Now, it is backed up by two other medium tanks. So let's see what can happen here. Alright, so bring my 2 HP tank back down to get heals. I realize that this is a... Well, it's a risky attempt, that's for sure. Alright, so my medium tank goes and takes a shot at his medium tank, doing massive damage. And then turbo charge pops up. Boom! Get that damage bonus. Let's go, people. Let's see what can happen with the turbo charge. Yes! That is what I'm talking about. So this play all along bam it was a ruse to get turbo charge and to flip and hit that artillery so now he is down his indirect support in the north 
and I go in with my medium tanks. Finishing up a bunch of units, moving my infantry up north to protect my medium tanks so that he can't get in there. Very important. And let's just skip ahead, building another medium tank. So, so far, this is the medium tank show. We got heavy, heavy metal coming in. Heavy metal. That's what I'm talking about. Alright, so, Brass has now pushed ahead in the capture game as well. And he's going in for some big hits. Oh, look at those hits. But the problem is, is he can't actually bring his medium tanks in because he can't break the wall. And if he did bring his medium tanks in, it would have been bad for him. And plus, with my power active, I get the 10% bonus, right? So that's pretty good. So smart move bringing his medium tanks back, that is for sure. Unfortunately, at this point, the damage is done down there. But if you haven't seen, up in the top corner... Brassmac, he has come in with some heavy artillery, some heavy metal of his own. We have a bomber up in the corner. That is spooky. There's one thing the medium tanks don't like, and it's a bomber. 100%. So now I have to completely rethink my strategy here, because now I'm going to have to be dealing with a big, spooky bomber oh boy oh boy all right so i want to get this uh <laughs> this i want it i'm hoping so i park a bunch of injured units over there and you know hope for the best praying to the advanced wars gods it's like just give me the property and leave me alone i'm hoping that he's got enough to deal with over in my front line that he will just let me have the property but we'll find out. Alright, so, now that the Battlecopters are about to get into position, I have to back off, because I cannot attack this without support from at least either air units or some anti-air, because the Battlecopter will move in and it will do heavy damage. And, Brass Mac playing as Jake, he's almost got his super right now. His super is sitting, like, just shy of 5k away. So, dangerous, dangerous stuff. Okay. Brass Mac, my friend. Let's see what you got. So, coming in with the Battlecopter. Getting some heals on his 2 HP infantry. Not a bad idea. Taking a few shots at my infantry. Decimating that front line of mine when it comes to infantry. The bomber is moving in south. Flipping terrifying, folks. Terrifying. And so far, I only have one anti-air to counter that bomber. So that is very risky. Not really sure what you can do. Because you have to really keep that anti-air safe in order to do anything. And the fact that he's got three medium tanks means that he can form like such a powerful front line of defense to guard that bomber. Then, if he uses his super co power correctly, he could just completely decimate everything that I have. There would almost be no chance of surviving that attack. Oh, scary stuff. So, I get my refuels. Also, if you guys are doing medium tank warfare, make sure to plop your medium tanks on cities as often as you can because they only get 50 fuel and they will run out of fuel and then you're just going to be stuck there in the mud having a bad time. Okay? So make sure to refuel them. Now Jess doesn't really need to worry about it because turbocharge will refuel it for you. But any other CEO, just be careful folks. Be careful. You don't want to get stuck in the mud. Alright, so... I don't want to just keep my units sitting here with all this stuff, okay? I don't want to deal with that stuff. So I'm actually going to front switch all my medium tanks up here. And I have just enough units in the south to kind of hopefully ward off his attack. If he decides to push. 
But I also know I can't just sit by willy-nilly and let them just build up units in the north. So I'm gonna send up a couple tanks, do a few shots at infantry. Obviously, I'm gonna get counterattacked. There's the sad truth of the matter, but sometimes you need to just go up and do damage. Sometimes you need to be aggressive. If you just sit there, willy-nilly, letting Jake push up on you, it's not gonna be good, okay? Sometimes you just need to sacrifice a few units in order to do some damage. So, oh, this is the beginning of bad times for Jess. So if you thought that the bomber was bad, the fighter is really bad. Because I tried to open up with a fighter to counter the bomber. <laughs> Odd plays, I know. But sometimes you don't have a choice. So even if my fighters are weaker, fighters are still strong enough that they can do very massive damage to bombers. They will at least do 9 damage on a normal day. As far as I know. Maybe 8, but either way, I would rather deal with 2 HP Bomber than deal with a full HP Bomber. Alright, so... At the end of day 13, Brass has still not popped his Super Co Power, so he is holding on to it, waiting for a good moment. So I do commend him on that. Especially not wasting the Co Power, trying to wait for a really good time to pop it. That is a smart move. Smart. Intelligence. He's a specialist, folks. Remember that. Very smart guy. Very smart. Okay, and he also forms a rather large uh, ball of doom over there. Right there. Backed up by three medium tanks, a bomber, four tanks, and an anti-air unit. And a battle copter! When did that get there? Oh my lord. But anyways... Spooky times all around. Alright, so let's see what I can do to counter anything that is going on right now. Okay, so... Take a shot at the tank. Combine my infantries together to hopefully get... No, oh, that's not a good move. Uh, well, I mean, like, it would be a good move, but the problem is this Battlecopter is probably going to hit it. But, if the Battlecopter hits it, then the Battlecopter isn't pushing up into this line, so... I mean, he's got an ultimatum now, right? Okay. Let's see what happens next. So, Brass Mac, once again, he's got a super still. But he's not popping it yet. No, <laughs> my infantry, oh god. Uh Cue the Lincoln Park. Alright. Ooh. Fighter is coming in now, too. So remember, folks. Brass Mac as Jake. That fighter will get plus 10% when on planes. And my fighter is just minus 10% all the time. Now, however... With the comm towers in play, all of my infantry and units are just base. Base as hell. So, that is perfectly fine. However, his units are just stronger. Okay. So, <laughs> he's sitting at 38 units, I'm sitting at 33. Okay, so I decide, like, you know what? I've had enough turbo charge, plopping in, taking those shots, doing the damage. I gotta do the damage to him before he does the damage to me. And I do a little fake out. I come back with the medium tanks. And the medium tanks are protected by both my fighter and my anti air unit. Ooh, beautiful. Okay, so I bring these units back. Because obviously he's got a big big chunk of stuff right there. And pushing these units up, they can't actually hit anything. So the only thing that would happen to these units is when this counterattack happens, these units would also get hit. 
So I bring them back just to make sure that they stay alive. But I also go up north and take some massive hits up there too. So that is good stuff. Alright, we got the block rock. Jake's super co-power coming in. Let's see how much damage he can do with this. Okay. Alright. Oh, big damage against the anti-air unit. Secondary follow-up to take it out. Battlecopter attacking the medium tank for 30% damage. 7 HP tank coming in, doing lots of damage to that one. Full HP tank, taking another tank down to 2. Fighter coming in to take a shot at the Battlecopter. 100% wiping it out. Other Battlecopters and tanks following up hits. Medium tanks going back to retreat. And a join. Wow, interesting. Huh. I don't know if I would have joined that unit. I probably would have just brought the medium tank back to get healed over time. Because that is just uh, losing a unit count. Uh, not necessarily a bad move, though. You know, I wouldn't necessarily say it's bad. You get a little bit of funds out of it, but I don't know. I just probably wouldn't do it. Anyways. Okay. Big hits on the tanks. Builds an APC this turn too because he knows that these units are going to run out of fuel. So very, very good. Very important to do. Alright. So I am moving in with my units. Taking shots. Boom, 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 boom. Now. Obviously, this bomber is still a threat, and I moved up a lot of my units into the front ground, front line, to do lots of damage. So, I'm thinking though, I'm thinking with my brain, that it's not going to be that bad, because if he is actually going to attack, the worst thing that he is going to be able to do is take out two medium tanks. The rest of my units are pretty much... Well, I mean, these guys aren't really safe because they got a whole bunch of stuff down here that's going to take damage. Or do damage. But my big units, the medium tanks, the one that I want to keep alive, they should be mostly fine. I will still have three medium tanks fresh coming in afterwards. And he's very pushed up right now. So maybe a little bit of an overextend. But he's just got so many units that, uh, you know, you can't really blame him. Whew. All right. So my southern front has been destroyed. Ooh, terrible stuff. Terribly spooky stuff. Alright. Day 17. So we're going to see what I can do. To fight against this. Unstoppable force right here. Woo. Because we can see right now. That I am down by a lot of units. Oh boy. Boy, that's like a 12-unit deficit right now, so that is very spooky. Alright, so take a luck roll against a tank, finish up the artillery up north. Sending my anti-air unit up north now. Okay, taking my weakened tank to actually do the first shot, because I don't want my 6 HP tank to take any additional damage. So, yeah... That's a thing. Alright, cool. Finish off with infantry, and then I pop turbocharge. Because now... Well, I mean, I had turbocharge before. 
Uh, but I decide that now well, I should probably pop it because I see a juicy attack I could do. So I take out one unit there. And I take a big shot at the medium tank. Boom! 70% damage. That's what I'm talking about. Other medium tank takes another shot, doing pretty good damage there. 90% against the tank. Stop the cap on my property with the other medium tank. Good. So that's good. Taking out the battlecopter with my tank. So now, the north is looking okay. So it's a little open. A little open. But, he doesn't really have too much to reinforce. Okay, so bring my transport copter down to do an additional line of defense, so that's good. I move my fighter down so that it's out of range of his fighter, but still in range to defend everything that's over here. So his bomber could go north, take shots over here, but we'll see if that happens. So with that power, I did manage to sort of even the playing field a little bit, so we'll see. Ooh, block rock, super co-power time. So he does those two attacks to get his super co-power, so that was smart. And that was good because it gave him just enough range to take those shots. Alright, so Battlecopter moves in, takes a shot at the medium tank, injuring it quite significantly. Followed up with another attack, taking it down to 2 HP, so that was a good shot. Other medium tank just completely wipes the floor with my tank. That was very sad. Mm. Oh, devastating. Devastating moves. Alright. He's also starting a cap on one of my properties too, which is unfortunate because I don't think I'll be able to interrupt that cap. It's not looking very good right there. APC moving one of his other infantry down into position to cap that property too, which is very good. Good APC play with that one. Alright. So just as soon as I thought things were looking okay, things are looking pretty grim again. So 22 to 32. So now there's a 10 unit deficit. But do I let that deter me? No. Because I am... Stubborn as all hell. And I will keep fighting until I absolutely know there's no hope. Oh. Alright, so continuing on. Taking more shots. Finishing off medium tanks. Moving in my fighter finally. Activating another turbo charge. Back to back turbo charges, people. That's what I'm talking about. That's the power of a three star co power right there. Sometimes you can get them back to back. So with that, I launch my counteroffensive. And I build a third fighter. <laughs> third fighter. Who would have thought that Jess was such an air specialist, you know? Alright, move my transport copter down to get protected from his fighter as well. Because I know that this attack can happen. Right there. Very dangerous, but is it enough? We'll find out. Now, I lost my medium tank up north, which is quite sad. Oh, I don't really agree with that right there. Well, I mean, that's not necessarily bad. Yeah, I don't know. I probably wouldn't have done it, but he did, so. Oh, the bomber moves in to take... A massive hit against my medium tank too so I'm down another medium tank and that opens up my fighter to being attacked that's unfortunate Ooh, but the issue with this attack is now it leaves his bomber open Ooh. all right folks so you want to see something good the day 19 counterattack from Mr. Cannon. Let's see what I can do. 
I take out an anti-air unit. Move in two fighters to just take out the bomber. Take a not very good engagement against the tank or the medium tank on my city, but obviously I had to get rid of it. Gotta get rid of it. But that also leaves his fighter open to be attacked by my fighter. Alright, so just doing my best to clean up the top portion of the map too. Because there's a lot going on up there. But if you can see, both of his ground units are now down to 1 HP. And he's only got one battlecopter left up north. And I have a fresh, fresh anti-air unit up there. Alright. Day 20. My tank has been destroyed. He actually fails the roll against my tank with his, which is really unfortunate for him. That would have been very good for him to be able to take that out. Alright, moving some of his units back. Doing a join with his units again. He attacks my fighter just to do some extra damage to it too. Unfortunately, sacrificing his fighter in the process. Alright, day 20. Things are looking better. Now there's only a 5 unit deficit between us. Alright, so take out the bomber. Take out a 1 HP infantry so that I can get the shot on the battlecopter. Taking that out, finally. Thank you. Okay, so I moved the 2 HP medium tank up here to be a blocker. So that's one of the reasons why I don't necessarily agree with joining units too much. Obviously, you can, and it's good. But a 1 or a 2 HP tank can still be a very effective blocking tool. Alright, so I try a triple attack on that stupid tank and don't kill it. Very disappointed, <laughs> but it is what it is, folks. It is what it is, that's for sure. Alright, so the only thing to do is to plop out more medium tanks and keep on keeping on. That is for sure. Alright, so he builds another fighter, builds a medium tank, and then just readjusts his units up north or up by his lab. Which functions as the HQ for this map, because in high funds you normally don't get an HQ, because the lab gives you no funds, and uh, that's really the only thing I can think of. Just to balance the funds a little bit, I guess. So he's sitting on block rock again, he's done pretty much a full retreat with his units. And we are going to see. So bomb, 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 lots of damage happening, bringing the fighters back, tanks are moving up. And then, boom, that's the end of my turn. So, what I have done is I pretty much just shifted my units into the center. I brought this guy over here to start capping these properties back. And two medium tanks are over here, just taking damage over here. Doing damage over here. So, is it a smart move to use medium tanks to destroy infantry? Uh, depends. Depends on the state of the map. So, the way this map was going is I thought that it was... Well, these are the only two units over there, right? So they're the only two that can hit them, and I need these properties back because, as you can see, I have a 4k deficit for uh, funds as well. So when it comes to high funds, or any game in general, if you have too much of a deficit with your properties, it can be dangerous for you. Now the one thing I did manage to do last turn is I managed to get ahead on the unit count. And the value, so that's good. So even at the end of the turn, he's only ahead by a little bit on value, and he's just slowly catching up. So that's good for me. Begin capturing a property. I'm going to flip that back in my favor. And then I see this giant death ball in the middle, and I'm like, oh boy, what am I going to do here? So I'll bring my medium tank back to get healed, use one of my weakened fighters just to take a shot at the battlecopter there. Because I don't want that to be sticking around for too much longer. 
I'm gonna get my infantry some heals, bring my units back to the center, then just readjusting according to what is going on here. Day 23 breaks out, and we are gonna see what happens now. Okay, fighter is down, battlecopter is, uh, our no, no, just the fighter down. Never mind. Don't even worry about that battlecopter. Battlecopter just moved back, that's all. Oh, he's got a mech now, too. So the mech is moving up. He's got another bomber. And that's it for there. So he is readjusting his forces to do another push pretty soon. Okay. So, bring my units back to get healed. Reforming my line. Moving my units back up. She made up north, so I'm a little, little spooked. So I am ahead of units now, and the, and I'm ahead in value, or ahead on properties now too. So now I have the 4K deficit. So things are looking good for me. But obviously, you don't really want to push into his line when he's got so many powerful units two fighters two bombers four medium tanks and then like a whole slew of other units oh that's like intimidating as all hell now it's five medium tanks so i am ahead in the medium tank game though i have like six almost seven seven full hp medium tanks so that is good but the problem is some of my tanks are down south right so they can't really be of help yet so what i'm gonna have to do is front switch all those units over to the center. All right, building more medium tanks and build another fighter because now he's got two bombers, right? So arguably I might have too many fighters, but you know, he's got four big air units and now I have four big air units. The only difference is my air units can't attack ground units, but they are gonna be a really good deterrent for um, not letting him push up, right? Because I can see he's doing like big front switches. And he's like going all out to the north now. And like, oh my god, that is spooky. That is some intimidating stuff right there. Alright, so. Bada bing, bada boom. All my units are moving. Very quick, quick movements here. And I build a Neo tank. So the Neo tank I thought was very important. Because he's got primarily medium tanks and everything, right? And I could build a bomber, but obviously the bomber is going to be a lot weaker than anything else. So Neo tank it is. And I could afford it, you know? Because now I have the deficit when it comes to funds. So good for me for once. Things are looking up for old Mr. Cannon, that's for sure. All right, so... He's got uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff, that's for sure. So, I know he's got block rock ready, so the most important thing is to go up and do a bunch of damage to him. But I don't want to do too much damage. I want to keep the majority of my units fresh. Alright, double medium tank this turn too. <laughs> Glorious. So... In true Yellow Comet fashion, you know, you got a bunch of Yellow Comet medium tanks up in the game, so that's good. Good stuff. So, we got Block Rock. We are getting into end game here, folks. Who is going to win this engagement? We got Brass Mac in the north with heavy, heavy firepower. We got Mr. Cannon in the south, also with heavy firepower. Who is going to win this engagement? We are going to find out right now. Boom. Takes out one of my units. Follows up an attack on the infantry. Takes it out. Battlecopter is down. Two battlecopters down. Anti-air unit down. Tank down. Fighter down. Anti-air unit down. Tank down. Medium tank down. Other medium tank down. Artillery down. 
Ooh, medium tank super injured. Ooh, couldn't finish off the anti-air. Oh, that's unfortunate. Ooh. Terrifying. Oh, God. Gives me chills just looking at that enormous force. Oh, boy. All right, day 27. He now has a nine unit deficit, nine unit lead. What are we gonna do? We're gonna pop overdrive. Okay. Let's see if I'm able to counter this or if it's all over for me. Take out an infantry, take out a second infantry, which leaves his bomber open to attack. Beautiful. All right, sacrifice a medium tank to do damage here, which was interesting because I was looking at it and there was actually a chance that my medium tank was going to live. God forbid. But it didn't, thankfully. <laughs> so go up and take that shot. And then the Neo tank that I built beautifully takes out the 9 HP medium tank that was left there, which leaves the other fighter open to take out that bomber. Move my 2 HP medium tank down, take a shot right there. Fighter moving in to take a shot at his fighter. Little tank taking out the anti-air, little tank taking out the artillery. I build another Neo tank and a fighter and two infantry this turn. So I have brought it back into equal territory, although now I am ahead by 78,000 funds. Of value, at least. And then Brassmac has decided to resign this match. Unfortunately for him. But as you can see, the state of the map at this point. He wasn't able to push enough with those units to do enough damage. My next push would have been devastating for him. Absolutely devastating. But holy hell was that a good match. Oh my god. That was probably one of the funnest matches I've had in Advance Wars like ever. The amount of combat that was going on the entire match. Crazy. Holy moly. I don't even understand how I managed to come back from having like, what was it, like minus 12 units at one point on like day 14 or something? Holy macaroni guys and girls, holy macaroni. Jesus. But that was amazing. I had so much fun playing that match. Jesus. Whew. That was crazy. Brass Mac, if you're here watching at all, you're an amazing player. Congratulations. The only thing that I think went wrong for you was just um, like around the day 14 mark, uh, when you went to go push in south, you just overextended a little bit. And maybe if you just didn't push in so much and pulled back and regained your units when you had the advantage on the unit count, I uh, probably, probably would have been you that won, more than likely. But just that little overextending was probably the downfall there. But holy moly, what a match. It's so much fun. Congratulations. You're an awesome player. And you know what? Hopefully I get to play you again in League. That would be fantastic. Uh, if I don't, though, I wish you all the best of luck. You're going to climb no problem. Holy moly. That was amazing. Great. Great, 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 great stuff. Woo! All right, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I know I did. So, until next time, this is Semi Original Guy, aka Mr. Cannon from Advanced Wars Byweb, leaving a link in the description where you can actually join Advanced Wars Byweb, play against people around the world today if you sign up for free. Alrighty. Take care, everybody. Bye bye for now.